Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at the Bible verse. Just like we get time, make time whenever we get hungry to eat. We gotta feed our spiritual bodies. We do that by reading the Bible. You can read a physical copy of the Bible, a free Bible app, or one of the various websites. We give you an appetizer or a verse of the day with some discussions and hopes that it will lead you to open your Bible, reading the Word for yourself. Because in this world where there's so much deception, the Bible is the only truth that we have. So today we're going to be reading a beautiful verse. I pray you enjoy. So if you have your Bibles, follow along with us. Psalms chapter 107, verse 20, or follow along on the screen. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Brian's Bible says, He sent forth his word and healed them and rescued them from the pit. I read that in history, as in the natural world, God's word is his messenger. And some believe that the word here intended may be a messenger sent a message sent by a human person much like the word that was sent to Hezekiah when he was sick or it may be suggested that it was sent by God or an angel like in like spoken in Job 33 22 through 24 or lastly it may be actually the word of God and that's what I believe here, because listen how beautiful this scripture is. I believe it's about Jesus. And if you read in this context, God sent his word, his son, and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That's exactly what Jesus came to do for us, isn't it? So this scripture, long before Jesus was born. Now, we don't have an author for who wrote 107, but it's believed that King David lived about a thousand years before Jesus' birth. So a lot of the times when he writes about, like in Psalm 22, for instance, if you read it, go on and read it for yourself. King David writes Psalm 22, and he's writing about a man in, in pain from a crucifixion. A thousand years before Jesus was born, in several centuries before crucifixion was ever a thing. Go on and read it. You will see the parallels between what King David is writing a thousand years before Jesus died on the cross. King David is writing almost word for word what Jesus goes through. So when this was written, written, 107, and who wrote it, we don't know. I mean, but this almost seems like it could be a New Testament verse right here. God sent his son, and he healed them, and he delivered them from their destruction. That is so beautiful, that is so amazing, because that's exactly what Jesus did for us. So this is a prophecy to me. Of God sending his word to heal us all. So whatever you may be going through, whatever troubles, struggles you may be having, addiction, depression, sickness, disease, sadness, you're mourning someone, you're looking for a job, you're struggling to put food on the table, you're struggling to pay your bills, you're trying to get a promotion, you're trying to get a raise, whatever it may be. Whatever is going on in your life right now. Know that God sent His Word to heal you and to deliver you. But there's nothing that you can ask God that He won't give you. Now, I'm not meaning that in a prosperity way, like saying you and asking for money. I'm talking about 
when you have a legitimate need, and you know what I'm talking about, a legitimate need, you're struggling right now. You're battling the addiction, you're saying, Lord, I, I can't get off this alcohol, I can't get off this or that. Lord, I'm struggling to, put, to feed my children. That type of stuff, that's what I'm talking about. Now, carnal stuff, if it's God as well, He may. I'm not going to handcuff and say that He won't. He may supply those needs, but that's not what our prayer should be about. We're not asking Him for things like that. We're asking Him for these, these legitimate trials and tribulations and struggles that we're going through. Crying out to Him. When you are, when you do need healing, when you knew, do need to deliver it. These legitimate things that, these struggles that we go through. Not this carnal baloney about wanting houses and cars. I'm talking about legitimate. God sent his son. Died a brutal death on the cross. To heal you, to deliver you. It's such an amazing thing. Trust in Him today. Believe in Him. Because if you read in your Bible, you are seeing yesterday's news today. And you are knowing that soon and very soon that trumpet is going to sound. In our communities have. I posted a video, or a, not a video, a picture rather, of a Jeremy Camp song, There Will Be a Day beautiful song and it talks about us. the world that we're soon and very soon going to be in where there won't be no sickness no sorrow, no pain, no destruction no death no sorrow there won't be any addictions, depressions no sickness, no disease no one's going to die. It's going to be a beautiful place. When I was getting ready for my Bible study on Wednesday night, I was listening to that song. And there's a line in this song that says, When we see him face to face. And let me tell you, that just, it, it, it maybe, I lost it. I can't always see Jesus face to face. When it says, We see Jesus face to face. I just I was just overcome, just crying like a baby in there in the shower. Because I'm so excited to see him. If we can see, like I said, we're getting tomorrow's news today in our Bible. We know that soon that trumpet's going to sound. Everything's getting set up. So you have to make a decision today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. Are you going to? Get off that fence and get in the world, or are you going to get in Christ? Having one foot in the world and one foot in Christianity is not, you can't teeter totter anymore. You need to make a decision now before God makes a decision for you. Because if you're not fully for God, that trumpet's going to sound and you're going to be left. So you got to decide. Am I going to live for God or am I going to chase this mirage that the world's offering me? I pray you make the right decision while you still have time. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. We're not guaranteed that God won't drop me dead before I post this video. Each breath that we have is a blessing from God. Each day we see is a blessing from God. So trust that God sent his word and healed you and delivered you. He loves you that much. Well, I pray this message blessed you. God loves you so much. You are not alive by accident. You were created for a purpose. God did not create you just to fill the earth with people, just to take up space. And much like any good parent, God only wants the best for you. God has a plan for you. When God formed you in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. You know, we all have this void in our life. Some call it a God-shaped hole, a missing puzzle piece. You try to fill it 
with everything that the world has to offer. Sex, drugs, alcohol, money, friendship, power, popularity, houses, cars, money. But nothing can fill that void. Only God. That's why they call it a God-shaped hole. That void is there because we all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us that are righteous, not one. That void, that sin is there because we live in a fallen world. Jesus is coming back to set up his earthly kingdom. And the requirement to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. But no one is without sin. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. We all sin. Sin means to break God's rules, neither thoughts or actions. We see here in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is perfect. No one, not one. We see that in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. That's echoed in Ecclesiastes 7.20. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good, and sinneth not. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 10 say, If we say that we have no sin, but deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. In verse 10 says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So we're deceiving ourselves and calling God a liar if we say that we're perfect and don't sin. And there's a punishment for our sin. We see that in Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all face eternal judgment and separation from God. This is why we must receive Jesus into our life as Lord. And believing what Jesus did is the greatest gift that we'll ever receive. It's a free gift of God that we of eternal life not about works no one can be saved by their own works you cannot be a good enough person we see here in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 it says for by grace ye are saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a free gift of God not of works lest any man should boast in Galatians 2 16 knowing that the man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We will never live long enough to even begin to pay for our salvation. Here's a word picture for you. If you don't accept Jesus' free gift, his get out of jail free card, and you stay in that spiritual jail cell, and the jailer opens the door and says that you're free to go, someone paid your bail, but you're relying on your works, thinking you could be a good enough person, so you stay in that cell thinking that you can get your own way to heaven, that you doubt that there's only one way, that you think you can find your own way, saying, no, I'm good, I'm a good person, God wouldn't send me to hell, I could get myself out of here, but you can never be good enough, so don't deny this free get out of jail ticket, you can still escape the spiritual jail cell. Because as you see, sin separates us from God. Not only does sin separate us from God, it's a valley gets deeper and wider with each sin. And that sin valley gets wider and deeper with every sin. So it separates us from God and man. You see how man is further from God now. Now the only way to atone for that sin and for God to fill that void in your life is by the shedding of blood. See it there, Hebrews 9.22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. You see, in the Old Testament, they would use the blood of an animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was a temporary bridge to God. Once they sinned again, they would have to offer another animal. Because as they sinned, that valley would get deeper in water. And see, what, look at what happens. It causes the bridge to collapse. God knows that we can never be good enough. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross. Jesus is the only one who lived a perfect life and became the substitute for our sins. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left his throne in heaven. He became flesh. He wasn't an angel. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a prophet. He was flesh and blood and bone, fully God and fully man. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus came to the earth to die for all of us. Jesus was crucified on a cross, died a brutal death, was buried in a tomb. He was in that tomb for three days and three nights, and then he rose from the dead proving that he is God because death and the grave had no power over him. Jesus took our place, suffered God's wrath for us, the punishment that we all deserve. We've seen the wages of sin is death. We're guilty for our sins. We deserve the punishment. But the punishment was poured out on Jesus. God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus paid God's price for our sins when he died on the cross. 
and our sins were nailed to the cross. Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him. Jesus shed his precious blood for our sins, and Jesus' blood covered those sins so that we don't have to die. Jesus was sinless. He was an innocent of death. And like any innocent man wrongfully arrested, Jesus died for us because of our sin, because we're guilty. We deserve God's wrath. The wages of sin is death. But Jesus loves us enough to die for us. Jesus is truly the only way to the Father. There you see John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because Jesus was perfect and never sinned, he was the only one worthy to pay the price for our sins. And just like the animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect with no spot, no blemish, no defect. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Paid our debt. We're free to go. Jesus paid our debt in full when he died on the cross. He purchased us, redeemed us, brought us back to him, purchased us with his blood, shed on the cross for us. Jesus paid for our sins long before we ever committed them. We see that in Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So long before we were ever born, Jesus paid the price for our sin in full. So don't wait until you overcome an addiction to your financially secure Go to God now. He will help you through anything and everything that you're going through. The gospel can be summed up in John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn you. He, he came and loved you. He knew that you couldn't be good enough, that you couldn't be perfect. So he came and died for you. Then Jesus ascended to the Father, ascended up to heaven. We're much like a courtroom. God the Father is the judge. Jesus, the Son of God, is our defense attorney. We see this in Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Also, 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And Satan is the prosecutor. We see that in Revelation 12, 10. More so the last part where it says, the Satan's the accuser of the brethren, which accuses us before God day and night. So it's like a courtroom. The prosecutor tells God all our sins. As you see here, it says, see what they did? They're guilty. But Jesus, our defense attorney, says, our sins are stricken from the record. Our sins are forgiven. Jesus paid the fine with his blood on the cross. You see it? Those sins are stricken from the record. I paid those sins in full. Your salvation is a free gift from God. So receive this free gift that Jesus gave you long before you were born. You know, Jesus wants to save us from the penalties of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first individually receive him. We see in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And just like works don't get us into heaven, neither does just knowing who Jesus is. You have to have Jesus in your heart, have a relationship with him. There's a big difference between knowing Jesus intellectually. Like you see there, what the guy's got in his mind, he knows about Jesus being on the cross. But there's a big difference between knowing him intellectually and having a relationship. So you see you got the one guy, he's got thinking about Jesus on the cross, this other one has Jesus in his heart, and they're hugging. So he's got a relationship with him. When you believe with Jesus in your heart, you talk to him in prayer. You read his word, the Bible. You put Jesus first before your family, before your job, before your money, whatever it may be. I like to think of it this way. Our sins put us in a jail, in a spiritual jail. So, where we wait our trial. Then suddenly the door opens. The jailer says that we're free to go. Someone paid our bill. That was Jesus. Jesus paid our bill. But we're running out of time. Jesus is really coming back soon. So we need to repent. Come back to God while you still can. Repent means to turn away, to change your mind, to do a 180, make a U-turn, change your behavior. It's that simple. It's ABC simple, in fact. Ask for admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit you can't do this on your own. Admit that you need Jesus. Be as for believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. 
Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. Believe that Jesus paid the price for your sins. Believe that Jesus did it all for you. See his call or confess. Call on the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess and repent of your sins. Talk to God. Prayer is a conversation with God. And since he's present everywhere, you can speak aloud. Talk in your head. He will hear you. On the screen is a sample prayer you can say. Or you can use your own words. Just as long as it's from your heart. That's what we've seen in Romans 10, 9 and 10. you, you got to believe in your heart. you got to really mean the words, and when you do, you'll be saved. But it's not about the prayer. It's about making that realization that you can't do this on your own. Prayer is ABCs of salvation. That's just a tool, but it's not what saves you. What saves you is having a complete repentance, to changing your attitude, and wanting to seek God. Wanting to have a relationship with Him. And repentance, you know, it's, it's changing your attitude. I mean, I give this example that... If I keep doing wrong to you and keep apologizing, but don't change my behavior, it's not going to mean anything. You're not going to accept my apology after a while. But if I if I say I'm sorry and I change my behavior and I don't treat you like that anymore, then you can you can forgive me easier. That's what repentance is. It's changing your mind. You know, you're you're changing your attitude. You're not you're not doing repeating the same thing. I mean, we're all going to mess up, but it's the I'm sorry, but I'm not going to change my behavior. We have to change the behavior. We're saved through faith in Jesus. It's a free gift from God, 100% free. Don't think that you've got to be good enough to earn it somehow because you can't. Just repent and believe in Jesus. Then you'll be saved. But you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Go to God first, not last. Wherever you are, God is with you. God craves you for a reason. When you accept Jesus' free gift and invite Jesus into your life, and God gives you a new heart and begins to mold you into who he created you to be. God is continually molding us because even though we are saved, we will still sin because we're unfinished. God is working on us. It's like these Legos. I figure this is kind of the best explanation, explanation I can do. You see this Lego, it's just, dump, it's just a pile, right? It's like when you dump a, dump a box of Legos on a table. You're going to get a pile like this. It's not going to look like a house until you start snapping those bricks together. That's what God's doing. He's continually, just like snapping these bricks together, he's continually molding us into who he created us to be. It's not just a dump them out on the table and it's a house. No, it's a pile like that. That's a, just a pile of mess. Now we got to snap the bricks together to make the house. That's what God's doing with us. But read the Bible for yourself, because with all the deception in the world, the Bible is the only truth in the world. You need to know what the Bible says for yourself, because Jesus' return is imminent. He's coming soon. We see all the signs that Jesus talked about happening worldwide. Banks failing, wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilence. So don't wait, don't put Jesus off. Give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. Jesus paid the price for you as a free ticket waiting for you to enter into heaven. And all you have to do is take the opportunity today, turn to Jesus, and accept that free gift. And do it before it's too late. You don't have time to wait. Tomorrow might be a one day too late. I love you. Jesus loves you. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. See you tomorrow, God willing. Or maybe we'll see you in the clouds. Have a great day.